The Music Emporium is kind of like, you know, the guitar store that you never knew existed, but always wanted to find. It's like somebody's home that really loved musical instruments and they just decided to plaster the walls with them. They got couches in here. Like, what is this? this is a guitar store with couches in it. I never even heard of such a thing. It's more than just instruments. Friendships are made here, connections are made here. To me, the Music Emporium is a place where we can translate our passion for music to our customers. The Music Emporium was founded in 1968 by a gentleman named Stu Cohen. One of the things that made the Music Emporium a unique place uh, right from its inception was that it seemed like the business was kind of secondary to the kind of uh, social club nature of the atmosphere. It's always been more about community and giving folks a place to congregate, to come together and, and um, share their love of music and instruments. The, the inventory at that time was completely used instruments. It was really about vintage guitars, vintage banjos, vintage mandolins, and it went from there. I started at the Music Emporium back in the early 2000s. At that time, the store was already starting to transition into focusing on a more curated selection of instruments. Musical instruments are, I think, a source of inspiration. Whether it's a beginner-level guitar from a well-established company like Taylor or Martin, custom instruments from builders we've had long-lasting relationships with, to independent luthiers that give you the chance to discover something really special. We want our customers to know that whatever they're looking at, that's the best of what's out there. It's like a trust in that relationship. One of the things I think is really amazing about the Music Emporium is you can in person see a rack of guitars that you may have only read about on a forum or in a magazine. When I came into the Music Emporium about five years ago, I was brought in to help the guys grow the electric section of the store. Um, up until that point, almost 50 years in the store's history, it had been known as sort of a premier acoustic shop in the country. So you can imagine coming in and trying to grow the electric section, um, as I'm fond of saying, was very similar to, to Dylan going electric back in the day. I felt it was really important to try and be respectful of what came prior and really handle this retail environment with, with you know, class and, and dignity, basically. One of the things I'm most interested in is carrying things that are amazing instruments now, but will also be amazing 10 years from now. When a cool instrument walks in the door and you open up the case and it's something you've only heard about or read about, and there it is, this instrument that you saw on an album cover or in some musician's hands, and now it's right in front of you. It's like waking up on Christmas morning every day I think a lot of our customers continue to return to us for vintage instruments because we're going to have a highly curated selection of the best of what's available. Um, I feel really fortunate to be the conduit for a lot of those transactions and thereby getting to handle dozens and dozens, you know, probably hundreds at this point of, of some of the best Martin and Gibson guitars that were ever made. From the get-go, this business was always about shared passion. To have that exchange of ideas and exchange of opinions and to see that wonder in people's faces about the things that we happen to have, that, that's business. We want people to know that no matter what they're gonna spend or what their ability is, this is a place you're welcome. And the team I have today really embodies that same spirit. In a, in a shop environment as small as ours is, uh, you know, a bond and a trust really develops. I think when we come to work every day that we definitely are kind of carrying a legacy because we've inherited something that's already great. So you definitely feel a responsibility to live up to that original vision for the Music Emporium. How can we make this the best store in the world? You know, at the risk of sounding immodest but it's like, that's the point. The Music Emporium is always, it's always adapting. I mean, it's always changed throughout its 50 year plus history. It's so, I'm sure it will continue to kind of evolve and, and change over time. 
but I don't think anyone here has ever been in music and foreign history interested in like, what's our ROI in like July gonna look like based on, you know, wh what are the markets we need to break into? It's, it's really coming from like a genuine place. And I think if we hold on to that, that core of who we are and kind of what we get excited about, I think that's the, the magic at the end of the day. No matter how much the retail world changes or the way that we you know, transact business changes, I don't want to lose that reverence for creating a space where people can really appreciate music and arts. That's what makes the Music Emporium special. And that's the business that I want to continue to create. This is the best place ever.